Good morning and welcome to Broadmeadow United Methodist Church. Here at Broadmeadow, no matter where you've come from or you're going, what you believe or doubt, what you're feeling or not feeling, what you have or don't have, and no matter whom you love, all of who you are is welcome into this community of faith by a God who loves you passionately. Thanks be to God. The hymn of praise this morning is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. It's number 103 in the hymnal. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please rise in body or in spirit as we sing together. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the Ancient of Days, Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as night, nor wanting, nor waiting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, high soaring above, thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. Thou reignest in glory, thou dwellest in light. Thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. All Lord, we would render, oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to Broadmeadow United Methodist Church, whether you're here in person or online. We're glad that you're here on this Christ the King, or Reign of Christ Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian year before we begin Advent and a new, uh, a new liturgical uh, rotation begins. As we begin this time of worship, let's open up in prayer. God of all times and all places, be with us in this time and this place. Just as you have spoken to your people through prophets and poets, we pray that we might hear the word you speak to us today. Just as you have spoken to your people through deeds and miracles, we pray that we might have eyes to see the word you speak to us today. Just as you have called your people to act in the midst of your creation, we pray that we might have feet to walk and hands to reach out. For the sake of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please remain risen and join with me for the historic confession of faith, the Apostles' Creed, found on 881 of your hymnal, or in your bulletin. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and holy, and it is that church's faith we now proclaim. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
prayer for illumination. Holy God, through the generations you have spoken to us, you have sent voices crying out in the wilderness. You have sent the words of an overjoyed new father and an expectant mother. You have sent the assurance of a condemned man on a cross. Quiet in us any voice but your own, that by the power of your spirit we might hear the words you speak to us today. Amen. And our New Testament reading is from Luke 1, 68 through 79. Bless the Lord God of Israel, because he has come to help and has delivered his people. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in his servant David's house, just as he said through the mouths of his holy prophets long ago. He has brought salvation from our enemies and from the power of all those who hate us. He has shown us the mercy promised to our ancestors, ancestors and remembered his holy covenant. The solemn pledge he made to our ancestor Abram. He has granted that we would be rescued from the power of our enemies so that we could serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness in God's eyes for as long as we live. You, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. You will tell his people how to be saved through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's deep compassion, the dawn from heaven will break upon us to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide us on the path of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Our next reading today comes from Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. We're praying this so that you can live lives that are worthy of the Lord pleasing to Him in every way, by producing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God, by being strengthened through His glorious might so that you endure everything and have patience, by giving thanks with joy to the Father. He made it so you could take part in the inheritance, in light granted to God's holy people. He rescued us from the control of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. He set us free through the Son and forgave our sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the One who is first over all creation. Because all things were created by Him, both in the heavens and on the earth. The things that are visible and the things that are invisible. Whether they are thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Him and for Him. He existed before all things, and all things are held together in Him. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the one who is firstborn from among the dead, so that He might occupy the first place in everything. Because all the fullness of God was pleased to live in Him, and He reconciled all things to Himself through Him, whether things on earth or in the heavens. He brought peace through the blood of His cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn of preparation is an insert in your bulletin in Christ alone. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless babe, 
This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, nor scheme or plan can ever pluck me from His hand till He returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. That is such a lovely hymn. Our gospel lesson today comes from Luke 23, 33 through 43. Please rise in spirit or body for the reading of the gospel. Hear now the words of our Lord. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified Him along with the criminals, one on His right and the other on His left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up His clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leader sneered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he, is real, if he really is the Christ sent from God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him some sour wine and saying, If you really are the king of the Jews, you save yourself. Above his head was a notice of the formal charge against him. It read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God? Seeing that you've also been sentenced to die, we are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did, but this man, this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and indeed the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Well, let's see if this cough drop will last through the whole sermon. <laughs> well, I think I have a few others up here, but I'd like not to have to switch in the middle of it. I uh, hadn't been sick since I've had two churches, and I've forgotten how um, by the time you get to the second sermon, when, you're, when your voice is about to give out, how, uh, how you're just kind of you're just praying that you get through it. But look, over the last few weeks, we have been talking about how to cling to our faith in difficult times. How to remain hopeful even when the headlines conspire to steal our hope away. So I think it's fitting that we close this series by turning to what is simultaneously the darkest moment in human history and the one from which we draw our greatest hope. Today is the culmination of the Christian calendar. The climax to which the entire story builds. It's alternatively called Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. The last Sunday of the Christian year, next week, next Sunday we will begin Advent, which begins again. This is the day which we announce that Christ is Lord of heaven and earth. 
Jesus is Lord, which was the first creed of the Christian church before the Apostles' Creed, before the Nicene Creed, before the Athanasian Creed, before every church's individual statement of faith, the church declared Jesus is Lord. Before we could, before we could explain as if we've ever been able to the Trinity, before we could talk about anything else, we could say and did say, Jesus is Lord. This is this Sunday where we always proclaim that, but where we make that explicit. And it's striking then that the lectionary carries us to a dump on the outskirts of Jerusalem where the stench of death hangs heavy and flies buzz around the dying bodies of criminals. That's exactly where we belong on this day of all days. This Christ the King Sunday. Because the King we have come to crown is unlike any other. His throne will be a cross. Which helps to explain why most of the people around Him cannot see Him for who He is. Jesus' public ministry begins with a declaration from the heavens. God's own voice declaring Him beloved at His baptism. He comes out of the water. The Spirit of God like a dove descends at this is my Son, my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. But that declaration is immediately tested. He is driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to learn a lesson that will undergird His entire ministry. Perhaps the most important lesson of all, if He is to complete His mission, that lesson is learning to recognize the voice of the tempter Because rather than trying to seduce Jesus with any of the lesser temptations that might derail the rest of us, whether it's money, ease, love even, the tempter plays to the doubt that will surround Jesus the rest of His earthly life. If you are the Son of God, then prove it. If you are the Son of God, there's no need for you to be hungry. You turn these stones into bread. Prove who you are. If you are truly the Son of God, then throw yourself off the highest spire of the temple and angels will catch you and therefore you will prove to everyone that you are who you say you are. If you are truly the Son of God, you must want to have sovereignty over the entire world. So all you have to do is bow down before for me, and I will give you all the kingdoms of the earth. If you are the Son of God, then prove it. That's the temptation that Jesus faces in the wilderness. That voice does not disappear when Jesus emerges from the wilderness after 40 days. Outside Caesarea Philippi, Peter, then Simon, His apostle declares Jesus to be the Messiah, the one for whom they have prayed. And this is a powerful moment. Finally, finally they get it. Finally they get it. Peter's bold confession leads Jesus to name Him as the rock upon which the church will be built. And that's where Peter's new name comes from. Petra, rock. But then the conversation turns. As Jesus begins to explain exactly what it means for Him to be the Messiah, what it means for Him to be the Anointed One, the promised King who is coming. And when Peter, the newly designated chief of the apostles, hears talk of suffering and a cross, I will be hung up on a cross, I will die. Three days later, I will come back, he says. Peter starts to try and talk some sense into Jesus. Surely, this is not what being the Messiah means. Surely, this is not it. This is not what we signed up for. This is not what you are supposed to be. This is not what we expect you to be. If they were surprised by his earlier remarks, the disciples are even more shocked when Jesus so quickly turns on Peter. As if he's seen a ghost. 
Jesus recognizes the devil of the desert. Jesus, no, you won't suffer. That's not who you're supposed to be. Get behind me, Satan, Jesus says. And here at the end, what was a whisper in the wilderness becomes a chorus of voices demanding proof. He saved others. Let him save himself. What they cannot see is that it is precisely the salvation of others that keeps him from saving himself. If you are really the Son of God, measure up to our expectations, they are saying. The religious leaders, the soldiers, even one of the condemned next to him join in the refrain, if you are king, act like it. But meanwhile, as he did in the wilderness, Jesus plays to an audience of exactly one. As they shout their taunts, he whispers forgiveness. As the breath is choked out of his own lungs, he promises paradise to the broken soul who hangs next to him. <coughs> This is not the proof anyone was looking for. Because this is not the king that they were looking for. They wanted a king like we all do. A king with a sword in his hand, riding a war horse, ready to destroy his enemies ready to take the reins of power forcefully if necessary. This is not the king they were looking for, but make no mistake, this, Jesus on the cross, this is a coronation. This is where we see what it means to truly be king. What it means in God's eyes to truly be king. Truly be king. On this, the climactic close of the Christian year, we are exactly where we belong. We are in the presence of our Savior, who still marches into the middle of all of our misguided expectations, who still offers his life for the sake of those who don't know what they are doing. It's here at the cross of our King that we too must challenge all the voices that demand that we prove who we are. So many voices every day telling us who we're supposed to be. But the only voice that matters has already spoken. The King of Kings has given His life to call us beloved. May we have the strength to remember that wherever the road takes us. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray with me now? Let us pray. Loving God, you have assured us that the days are surely coming when your people will know peace, your people will know justice, your people will know righteousness, confident in your promises. We proclaim with faith, the Lord is our righteousness. We have assured us, you have assured us, that a leader will come to rule with wisdom. We pray this day for those in particular need of justice, righteousness, and mercy. We pray for the trampled, the ignored, the brushed aside. We pray for the homeless, the loveless, and the healthless. We pray for leaders in governments, homes, communities, and schools that they may know the influence of wisdom rather than power and declare with faith, the Lord is our righteousness. You have assured us of the salvation and safety of your people. We pray this day for those who only know violence, those whose countries have been torn apart by invasion, civil war, and private armies, those whose communities have been forgotten by all but the warlords and gangs, those whose homes are places of danger and fear rather than sanctuary and love. May they declare with certitude, the 
Lord is our righteousness. God of all creation, we pray this day for the reign of Jesus Christ. We pray that in the midst of chaos, we might hear Jesus' words to us. That in the midst of heartache, we might know Jesus' presence. And in the midst of a cacophony of voices, we might proclaim, the Lord is our righteousness. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, the One who taught us to pray and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I want to invite our ushers to come forward as we prepare for the giving of God's tithes and our offering. The blessed Apostle Paul sings the praises of our Lord Jesus Christ, the firstborn of all creation, in whom all things in heaven and on earth were created. Let us affirm God's sovereignty over all creation, continuing our worship through the offering of our gifts to the Lord. God, you have looked upon your people with mercy, generosity, and love. You have granted your favor to your people, offering them redemption, salvation, and wisdom. And so we offer these gifts for your hurting and broken world. May they be multiplied to do your service. May we be strengthened to do your work. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who multiplied small gifts and fed multitudes. Amen. Maybe. Oh, no. Stay, stay standing. <laughs> Did it again. Our closing hymn is number 370 in the hymnal Victory in Jesus. We'll sing the first and third verse. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is due Him. 
He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. You may be seated. We have a few announcements. Um, as always, Bible study this uh, this Tuesday night, 6.30. Uh, we're discussing the book Trinity, The God We Don't Know by Jason Biasi, and you can get all the information right here, and it's all, it'll also be uh, on Facebook. Uh, we do have Theology on Tap coming up on the 30th, so not this Wednesday, but the next, and that'll be at 6.30 at Fertile Grounds. A um, couple of things from the insert. Uh, we I know the, the UMW are doing uh, a few, a couple of angels. They're doing an elder angel and uh, and a kid, um, and uh, Bella and Jada. And here are some of the things that they need. Uh, if you uh, if you want to take part in that, please by December fourth, uh, get those things to the church, uh, and you can put them uh, on the the right outside the office on the the pew right outside of the office. We have a concert coming up, just like last year. Our choir and the choir from Wells Memorial United Methodist Church are, uh, are going to uh, be joining forces and, um, and singing uh, a Christmas, uh, Evermore, a Christmas, Evermore and Evermore, a Christmas concert. They'll be here on, uh, on December 11th in worship, so that'll be great. And then at 3 p.m., they'll be at Wells, so they, you get a chance to hear it twice. And if it is as good as it was last year, which I know it will be, uh, you will want to see it at least twice because that was uh, just one of the best parts of Christmas last year. And uh, I'm looking forward to it this year uh, as well. We um, one, one last, uh, several things in the bulletin. I'm not going to try and go over all of them. You can read. But um, do, do pay attention to the Buy a Brick campaign. We've talked about that. Uh, one thing that's not in the bulletin is next Saturday at 3, correct? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Uh, if you would like to come and help decorate the church for Advent, because next week, it, next Sunday is at begins Advent. So if you'd like to come and help decorate, uh, I know that um, that would be well appreciated. The more people that are here, the faster it gets done. Um, if you would like to, over the next four or five weeks, take part in the lighting of the of the Advent wreath, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to start drafting people, and so. Uh, let me know about that. One final thing about Advent, we have um, we have a, a new sermon series coming up called Generation to Generation that will start next week at Advent and run all the way through Epiphany. We're going to have a devotional book available, and if you would like that devotional book, it's not it doesn't cost you anything. Just let us know. Uh, let the office know, and we will have we'll have a couple of extras printed up next week as well. But we want to be we want to know. How many we need, uh, but it's it's a really wonderful uh, little devotion book with hymns and, uh, and writings and poetry, and so I hope that uh, you'll take advantage of that. And if you'd like that online, we can get that to you, or um, we can get that to you as well. That you can just have it and download it at your house. But um, but if you'd like the the nice colorful one, we'll <laughs> we'll print that up for you and get that to you next week. Um, I think that's all the announcements for today. So as you go from this place, go out into the world in peace, declaring Christ the King and ruler over all creation. Go out 
into the world with courage, supporting the ways he gives light to those who sit in, a, in darkness and guides our feet in the way of peace. As uh, to, to paraphrase that great prophet, Waylon Jennings, it don't matter who's in D.C., it doesn't matter who's in Jackson, it doesn't matter who's in the halls of power in this world, Jesus Christ is still the King. Amen. I didn't plan it. I just am showing up. Yeah.